guys how's it going welcome back to another episode of socal watch reviews i am miguel uh and with me p ross as always how's it going buddy yo what's going on it's your boy p ross back in the building for another one episode 56 man I mean, yes we, we've been we've been we, we were uh, reminiscing right so it's been august 2019 recently released the first episode so it's been a yeah. little over a year it's a lot of work a lot of guests and uh people really seem to enjoy it and we too you know we we, we definitely enjoy having guests it's always different and and they come from different parts of the world or you know different backgrounds so why don't you do the intro p ross let, let the people know who we have today okay i got this you know what i'm saying we have a brother okay and the name of his youtube channel can relate to a lot of us. Watch me go broke because I'm pretty sure as a watch enthusiast, <laughs> you spend your last on that piece that you really want. You know what I mean? And I'm pretty sure a lot of us ain't got a lot of money in our pocket. You understand? So right now we got Chris from the Watch Me Go Broke YouTube channel and Instagram page in the building. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. I'm glad to be here. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, hey, thank you so much for uh, coming on. I, I, I do appreciate it. I've been watching your channel from the beginning, as I was telling you. I've uh, been a fan, and I'm really happy that you agreed to come on the show. <laughs> you well, are... I appreciate it. I I really in, enjoy watching uh, your channel as well, so I'm, I'm glad oh, we could meet up. Yeah, I appreciate it. Hey, this is this is one of the cool things, you know, you get to collab with different people and YouTube is such a such a big space, but obviously in what we do is so niche, but I do realize there's people coming on the scene now and we've had some of those people that just started, actually a few, right, P? Uh, mm -hmm. A few people that started uh, during quarantine have had, had some good success, but I know you've had your channel for over a year, right? Yeah, I think it officially says October of 2019, but I don't think I put anything out till like December of last year. So yeah, just about a year now. Yeah. Okay, cool. Cool, cool, cool. Well, before we go into the introductions, like the official, you know, origin story of, of, of you and everything, why don't we why don't we do a wrist check? So you're you're a guest. What are you what are you rocking? I have the uh Bulova. Oh, Ocean, or not nice. oceanographer. Oh, no, yeah, yeah. Misname the watch. You're trying to show the watch. You say the wrong name. Okay, that's not. <laughs> that's, I'm not wearing the oceanographer. I'm so used to saying that. This is the bull of a surfboard. Uh, nice. The surfboard. So yeah, I've got a review coming up of it. So hopefully, uh, that'll be good. But that's, yeah, that's at least cool yeah, get the get the get the watch that you're wearing right. That's that's a good yeah. Start, that's probably that, that, that's pretty important. I would, I would like to say. <laughs> <laughs> P. Ross, what are you wearing? Timex Marlin. Oh, is that the new one? Yeah. yeah. Nice. Uh -huh. Yes, sir. That's cool. What, yeah. what was it? The the, the... Tosh Schneider. Tosh Schneider, right? Was yeah. that a H Hodinky special? No, or no, -uh. just a -uh. Timex. Just a okay. Timex Tosh Schneider. Tosh Schneider collab. That's all. That's pretty cool. Uh, that's yeah. cool. Uh, shout out to our friend Omar. Yeah, um, absolutely. Shout out him. to O. Yeah. That's you know pretty cool. Well, today I, I got in for review this watch, and we actually had this guy on the show from the Albany Watch Company. I got mm. the Ama Diver. So pretty cool watch, um, the Kickstarter watch. I'm going to do the review on it. I, I just I got it a few days ago. I didn't show it any love, so I took it out this morning. I'm like, let me let me rock it out. And also shout out to my friend Eve from Alias Steve Dan Channel. She was very nice and sent me in this shirt. Uh, I don't know if you can. Oh, see nice! It. That's nice. Speedy, a speedy shirt. I was gonna yeah. wear my speedmaster, <laughs> but I'm like, nah. Let me rock something different. You know, something that I have to give back. But yeah, this shirt it just showed up in the mail. She asked me, she's like, "What size are you in shirts?" I thought it was a little weird, but I'm like, um, you know, the size. And then I this, this showed up in the mail, and I'm like, oh man, that's so nice. And she's like, you know what? I just wanted to thank you for what you've done and what you do for the community and she she was on the podcast as well so it's really really nice if you don't follow her anybody listening or watching alias steve dan she is from the philippines and she is a girl and she is doing her thing she just released a video a state of the collection right p and it was like a poem. yeah yeah very very it was nice very creative nice. very different and that's what we need you know this watch communities filled with a bunch of men so to have a woman in the in the industry is definitely cool in the community so but anyway so that's what we're rocking so why don't you uh as you know you're a guest why don't you just quick origin story what got you into watches you know and, and who you are so that way when people are listening to you they kind of know <laughs> who they're <laughs> hearing from 
All right. Well, I am the host of Watch Me Go Broke. It mm-hmm. is a YouTube watch review channel. Uh, you know, <laughs> I, I take. Uh, you know, I I've never claimed that I'm a watch expert or anything like that. Okay. Uh, from day one, I never said I was. I just I'm a guy that likes watches, and I I, I feel like you know if you want to come along this journey with me, that'd be great. Uh, but uh, no, for me, it's like ninety percent of watch collectors out there. It was James Bond you know, in the beginning, like er, early on in, in my life, watching the, the James Bond movies and how prominent the watches were in those movies, like Sean Connery with his Rolex 6538, you know, such a cool watch. And then you get yeah. Roger Moore with all of his Seikos and, and, you know, so that, that was like a more affordable watch that you could get. Right. And of course, all the way up to uh GoldenEye, and this is where it gets with the same as everybody else out there. So uh GoldenEye was the first movie I saw in the cinema by myself, like by without yourself. my parents, by myself, mm. without without my parents, without friends, anything like that. And I think it was the only one in the theater, which was weird too, but because I think I saw it, <laughs> I saw it, I saw it like opening day at like four o'clock or something. It, my mother took me after school. Okay. And uh, so, you know, I saw that. And of course, that's the Omega Seamaster 300M in that. And that watch is just as big of a star in that movie as Pierce Brosnan was. I mean, you know, yeah. you know, lasers and shooting off landmines and stuff. So then I was kind of on a quest from my late teens to uh, find a watch that looked like that because I couldn't obviously I couldn't get that one. Yeah. Uh, and I think I was rocking an Armatron that I thought looked nice. like it, okay. but it ended up being like a Submariner homage for a, n- a number of years. And mm. then, um, and then subsequently, uh, probably about four or five years ago, I started kind of doing some research into watches and stumbled across the SKX. And obviously oh, that came, okay. you know, highly recommended. So literally my story is the same as everyone else's, uh, pretty much. But, uh, so I got my hands on one of those and, um, you know, it's just been down the, down the rabbit hole at that point, which, you know, everybody says, so, you know, and then you get down the, you, you go down the strap code thing where, you know, you can get steel bracelets for it and all that right. stuff and all these NATOs and accessories. And then, so it kind of snowballed uh, from ma- there. It makes sense. Mm. Okay, cool. It makes sense. And SKX was actually one of my first like real watches, if you will. Cause I mean, obviously I had a Biloba and I had, an Armani, you know, and I thought I was super cool with my fashion watch, but SKX is definitely what did it for me too. That that's what what started the whole thing. But and I've never, I haven't reviewed that on the channel, and that's like a right, <laughs> it's like a rite of passage that you, you have, have to, to do that you watch. And I, I, it's you know, I, I got them around. It's gonna happen, but I just haven't done it yet. They've been, they've made appearances, but not a, uh, not yeah. an official review. No, for sure. And and I mean, I reviewed mine, of course, and. <clears throat> sorry i can't talk this morning but no I, I reviewed mine and i mean there's only so much you can say right i mean you could only give it your own opinion because if you review it review it it's like there's a, been reviewed a million times but yeah. to give it your own twist and i would be very interested to see your your review because you're definitely entertaining and speaking of entertainment youtube oh, yeah. why why youtube what, what what drew you to youtube well i um I was doing another show without getting like into a great detail. I was doing another show for a, a company that was like a national thing. And uh, I, that got, that got canceled oh, uh, okay. abru- abruptly. And I was kind of sore about it. Not, yeah. not really, but I mean, I kind of, <laughs> and then, uh, so I decided, you know, I'd been wanting to do the, the watch review channel. And so I just decided, well, now's the time go ahead and do it. And so that's pretty much how it got started. And I felt like there was a little bit of a, like a, a an area that I could slide into because yeah. most, re- most watch reviews are, are you know fairly monotonous and, yeah. you know, they, you know, they got, they were missing the third heat. I felt like, you know, they had a, they had the watch, they had the information, but they didn't really have the entertainment, you know, side Absolutely. of it. So, I so that I felt like I might could slide in there and, and make some headway there. So, and it's worked out pretty well so far. No, I agree, right. man. I mean, it, that's <clears throat> honestly what drew me uh, to your channel, you know, was the you, like your your voice and the entertainment. And I was like, whoa, what the heck am I watching? Like, this is different. It's cool because <laughs> yeah. you're right. You know, every, every watch reviewer out there, not not now, but back in the day, it was very much the same. And it was like carbon copy. And, um, <clears throat> you know, it's, it's, it's hard to be different on YouTube, whether you're doing watches or blog or 
cars or whatever it, it, it is very hard to be different but when you do find that that unique thing that makes you you it's like you just stick with it you know and some people may like it some people may not like it but that's okay that's right. just you you know so yeah eh. <laughs> yeah i feel like I've, I've kind of backed myself into a corner a little bit because uh you know watches are inherently not funny uh yeah. so it's kind of yeah. you know some of the companies are funny but writing yeah. watch jokes is uh it's kind of hard writing jokes about watches uh, for sure. It's a challenge. Yeah. Right. So, uh, so, um, have you ever worked in the entertainment industry? Cause you, you have a natural charisma. You know what I mean? I have watched your, uh, watched girls. Uh, <laughs> oh yeah. You know what I mean? And, and, and yeah. it was hilarious. You know what I'm saying? Very, oh, very entertaining. And, um, and how did you come up with the concept for some of your videos? Well, um, I, you know, I really don't know. They're not really well planned out. Like you would think, I don't know if they look like they are or not, but they, they're certainly not. I mean, a lot of it's, uh, made up at the time. Like really? I'll just roll the key. I roll, feel, yeah. I kind of feel like you kind of improv a little bit. And yeah. Just, big time. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? So very rarely do I write anything. It's if I've got like a long, you know, voiceover intro, I'll write that. But I, but generally I just click on the camera and whatever comes out comes out right and sometimes it works out sometimes it doesn't i i think i've probably said a lot of stuff i shouldn't have said but <laughs> I don't know. you know it is what it is right the the mitch mcconnell thing was funny though that was hilarious yeah. <laughs> that 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 was hilarious right there i like that i like that <laughs> well thank yeah. you that's yeah, funny sure. so i mean you you did mention you work for for another uh company doing the youtube thing but aside from that you haven't been in movies or in tv shows or i mean it, it no i've 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 treaded the boards a little bit uh you know in in, in theater and stuff like that and i've Got i've it. been in a an improv comedy troupe and stuff like that and i've done some voiceovers and things like that but uh, nothing nothing real major but but there is a little bit of experience there yeah I mean, it sounds like mm. it. you're you're seriously a natural in, in in front of the camera, and your voice, of course. I mean, it sounds awesome. You know, you have this. Uh, oh, thank you. Yeah, yeah. You you could <laughs> you could definitely do that. Uh, you know, that trailer voice and coming soon oh. to a theater near you. <laughs> Something like, I'm dang this guy. I love that. <laughs> well, thank but, you. I appreciate it. Yeah, that that's one of the highlights for me. It's like you you're knowledgeable. In the, in the watch base, because I, I could tell that you know watches and you're passionate about it, which is, I, I could see that, you know, but the entertainment, like seriously, people, if you haven't checked them out, watch me go broke, go to YouTube, you won't be disappointed. He's very Absolutely. different. Uh, but on your channel, you do cover a variety of, uh, you know, watch brands from micro brands and homage watches to, and of course, you know, your Seikos and your Bulobas and everything. But out of everything, what would you say is your favorite brand, you know, out of everything? Invictus, uh, because I watched the Invictus oh, Pro yeah, Diver yeah. review. Yeah, no, I, <laughs> yeah. that's not it. No, no. Uh, <laughs> hey, come on, come on. <laughs> well, I think picking picking your favorite watch brands, like picking your favorite kid. I mean, how, how could you possibly do that? But then, <laughs> but then I mentioned that, I mentioned that to people that have kids and they're like, Oh, oh no, I have a favorite. So it's like, <laughs> right. I don't know. you're wrong. You're but wrong. I, yeah. yeah. So I don't, I don't necessarily have a favorite. I think, you know, Bulova's knocking it out of the park with their re-releases like the oceanographer and I, the surfboards looking really great. Uh, they're doing a lot of good stuff. Uh, I also like, uh, blwrx or some people call it bullworks or whatever it's mm. it's uh a smaller brand it used to be neymar but i think you know what you're getting mm. with those uh is uh, a, a tremendous amount of value for money uh and especially their uh thousand meter diver which yeah. I, I, some people say it's an homage i don't really see that necessarily they say it's like to the deep cc dweller the rolex deep cc but it's a it's a completely mm. different case different size and i mean yeah it's got the the dial and the hands and stuff a little bit close to that but uh but yeah i mean that that watch just uh, really screams uh quality but as far as one that i'm really interested in laurier which i know you've yeah. talked about a little bit uh i mean they're just they're they're also knocking it out of the park just Every mm. release they have, I'm like, oh my gosh, I gotta get that. I need like to get every every, yeah. every release, yeah. and and I sit when they released their latest watch, the, the I think it's the 
yeah, the Hyperion, I think it's the GMT. And I sent him a message. I said, guys, you're going to really make me go broke. Seriously, <laughs> like buying all these watches. And they mm. said, well, that's not our intention. But yeah, no, that's not our intention. Much, but, but please. Buy no. It. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's like every release is just a, a home run, really, with them. Yeah, mm. I, I like what they bring to the table. I mean, it has their own unique flair to it, but it, it it still looks kind of vintage. And you know what? I need to reach out to them to get them on the show. We've had some microbrand owners on the show and definitely want to connect with them. I respect their watches. Never seen one in the metal, but I've heard some some great things about them. Uh, yeah, sure. I'm big into to, to vintage. And a lot of people have a problem with the acrylic crystal which yeah i i, I get right. that yeah it's not sapphire but you know if you're if you're going for that vintage look there there really is no other company that's doing it better right now mm. yeah absolutely and speaking of vintage i mean we i don't know if you know this but we're big vintage uh people as well p ross oh yeah a ton in his collection and yeah yeah oh yeah yeah it's it's one of those things like hit and hit or miss and i i watch one of your episodes where you actually found a fortis and it was affordable yeah. and i was like yeah. well Wait, yeah what when you find it <laughs> down at the bottom of a bucket in a flea market uh, yeah it's it was affordable because the guy didn't mm. know what he what he really had so i kind of got a deal there but and, and aren't those the best finds though oh man yeah, yeah. whenever yeah. i get a chance to do that it's it's just so fun how that happened actually the guy the guy he was selling watches at the flea market and i was going through all of his watches and he had them all on display and then he says well i got a few uh buckets in my truck that i haven't even gone through if you want to if you want me to bring them in you can look through them i said hell yeah i want to look yes. through them sure yeah. if you haven't <laughs> even looked at them yet yes and that's where i found the the fortis in in there mm. so and I, I picked it up for 70 bucks so oh good man. Deal. wow yeah because yeah. yeah, mm-hmm. those watches are what like a thousand close to a thousand dollars something I've, a new one i saw on ebay was going for two thousand but i think it's yeah. probably right around 900 to a thousand when it's mm. when it's working properly i mean this one still needs to have a quite of quite an overhaul but still a good deal right yeah that's a fantastic deal and i was in love with it i i saw it and i just cannot believe it. i was like how the hell did that guy find that one <laughs> yeah. for bucks? Yeah. granted I, I know it wasn't working properly but even with an overhaul if it costs you, let's say less than 500 bucks, it's still a steal, you know, it, it's a yeah. great deal. So, okay. Oh. So your favorite watch brand is Invicta. Perfect. Uh, yeah. right. <laughs> <laughs> hey, nothing so, wrong with Invicta. Nothing wrong with Invicta. No, 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 no. The, the pro diver, that's the pick of the litter for sure on that one. Yeah. Actually the, the one that I like, and I've never seen in the metal is, well, what is it? P Ross is 1954. The, 19... the 1953. Oh yeah. 1953. 1953, the Tudor homage. Yeah, has that come right. out again? Has no, it, it has, has not. That, nope. Yeah, they, they released it once nope. and then it's uh-huh. gone, you know, forever. Yeah. So, yeah, I'd, I'd love, love to check that out for sure. Yeah, yeah it's well, a nice looking watch. Well, before sure. we move on, since we are talking about watch brands and everything, we, we need to ask, man, because I know we you had some homage watches in, in your channel. How do you feel about them? Because I know you don't cover them 100%. So, you know, you're, you're kind of like me, right? So I had one on the channel, but then I kind of try to stay away from that stuff. Uh, but how do you feel about homage watches? Well, for me, it comes down to legality. You know, mm. is it legal to produce a watch that looks like another watch? Yes. As long as you're not putting the name on the dial. I think yes. that's what most yeah. people say. And that's okay. You know, one-to-one copies, but I'll give you an example. Like Seiko really kind of sets themselves up for this. Uh, when they were, and I, I know you, you like this watch a lot. It's the, uh, the, the first diver that they released and then yeah, they the re-released it. Yep. Yeah. 62 Moss. And, uh, they re-released it as the SLA 017. Yep. I think, and it was like four thousand yeah, dollars. And and everybody was like, "What in the world?" And then they just like made just a few of them, right? 2000. And I was like, "What in the world?" And so then you had some of these uh, like uh, brands like San Martin, or I don't know how you mm, say it. Some people yeah. say San Martin, San Martin. Right. I say San Martin, but uh, yeah. So so they came out with one that was really what I think Jody from Just One More Watch said this is that you know this is the watch that Seiko should have released. Yeah. Uh, and so you're getting all, all the specs and stuff like that. So I, I think brands like Seiko kind of set themselves up for that undercutting like that. Uh, yeah. well, l- well, let me give you an example. So the, uh, without going too long, uh, the Seiko turtle, the SRP 777. Okay. It's, I look today, it's about 400 bucks to get it off of Amazon. Yeah. And so, uh, that, 
you know, we, we all know it's uh, hard Lex crystal, uh, aluminum bezel, right. you know, all that stuff, 400 bucks. And then you have like a company like San Martin that makes the exact same watch with sapphire crystal, ceramic bezel, uh, and the quality control is way better way better you know the alignments are all good seikos are you know notoriously out of alignment and stuff like that so so that's where they leave themselves open and you know i think that the san martin turtles like 170 bucks or 200 bucks or something so that they leave themselves open for that because they're not really taking care of those little brands that they already have you know that they could upgrade and so i don't know that's just my opinion no, it makes sense. I, I I guess where I have a problem, and then I, you know, we we recently actually just had a guy that focuses Oscar. So I bought a watch. He does nothing but homage watches, right? So obviously he he defends them and everything. But where I have a problem, it's not so much what you get, right? Because you get a lot for your money. But it's the main thing for me. It's like originality. Like it's not original. So it's like sure if you're looking for something a bang for buck per se then yeah go the homage route but also i feel that the people that have issues with homage watches are people like me right like watch people but people that are not they just they're looking for a good value in a watch it's perfect watch for you like you don't care about homage watches right you don't you don't care about oh it looks like a uh, like an omega or rolex it's fine then pick it up you know for me i just have a problem i mean i like things to be original and I know that everything borrows their aesthetic from something else, which is fine. But I hate when it's like a one-to-one replica. Oh, sorry, copy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, so would you say would you say the Islander from LongIslandWatch.com is that kind of the exception to the rule? Uh, See, that's the weird one. You you throw that in the mix, and it's mm. like you know, is that now okay? Or you know, it's it's so unusual, you know the way that was done. Uh, yeah. and I, I think they're awesome. I, I love mean, them. look, I know Mark, so I'm not, and, and, and again, I'd be like, I'm not, ah, that's, that's a tough one. Right. Cause <laughs> look, um, it, it is an homage watch of the SKX for sure. But I think he gets a pass from me and here's why, because he's a member of the community and has been a member of the community for way before this whole YouTube thing was even a YouTube thing. And he saw the need, right? He started selling parts to mod your SKX and eventually just said, well, why don't I make it easier for you guys and just build the SKX you guys want? You know what I mean? Uh, So I think it's different because he's catering to a community of people that were modding their SKX. You know what I mean? So it, it is a little different in my opinion, um and he's here in the u.s he's a great guy like i said he's a part of the community and he sells other watches you know so he's not trying to make a quick buck by just saying i'm not going to sell anything else except for the islander you know but and i think the islander is done a little bit more tastefully too yeah i I would say if you if you really look at him it's not a one-to-one copy he he did add his own kind of unique flair because he did change the bezel and stuff like that so yeah he's Mm -hmm. he's in a different category for sure um, and I know he's coming out with a bunch of different models, right? Yeah. Resembling Fleegers yeah. and this and dress watch and whatnot. So yeah, he, well, how do you feel about it? I mean, what's, what's your take on it? Uh, the Islander. I, yeah. I love it. I, I think it's great. Um, you know, really good quality. And I like that you can like reverse engineer it back into an SKX if you wanted to completely. So yeah. that's, that's pretty neat if you wanted to do that. Uh, but yeah, I mean, he made the SKX that we always wanted really, you know, yeah. he, he, he took where Seiko really dropped the ball. Well, not really. Cause it's 96. The watch came out in 96. So they didn't yeah. really drop the ball, but as far as like their new release of the Seiko five, when they so got rid of the SKX, <laughs> oh yeah. man, they had so many opportunities and just really shit the bed on that one. So mm. that's that's one of the things that I don't like about Seiko. I'm a Seiko fanboy at heart and probably always will be. But man, it just it, it is pretty upsetting. And we'll go into that. I know we have some questions for yeah. you about Seiko and going up market and whatnot. But right. man, you're right. It's like they had the opportunity and then they went this route. It's like, how can you take something so iconic like the SKX ISO certified 200 meters and then just come out with something that kind of looks like it but it doesn't perform like it you know it's like yeah. you, you just missed it you just missed it <laughs> right well we gave you a hacking and hand winding and Ooh. got rid of everything else 
Mm. So I don't, I don't know. <laughs> Do they offer Sapphire in the new Seiko Fives? I think no, no, they don't. I don't, no. I don't believe so. No. Okay. So speaking of Seiko, as everyone knows, they've been moving up market. Yeah. Um, no longer being the affordable watch company, right? Yeah. What is your thoughts on that? Well, I think that it's unfortunate, uh, and I touched on this just a little bit ago. Uh, the Seiko really is the only brand that leaves themselves open to the undercutting of the homage market. Yeah. You know, Rolex to me, those homages, they don't affect Rolex's business whatsoever because the people that were going to buy those, they're not going to buy a Submariner anytime soon or, you know, yeah. uh, Daytona anytime soon. Uh, but the people that would buy a Seiko at the $250, $300 price point, uh, they would now buy the homage because it's such a it's such a close price and the the specs are better on those. So I think it's a mistake. I think they they really should get back. Or you know they can do two things. You know you can walk and chew gum at the same time. I mean they don't have to completely you know turn everything pro specs and all that. You know like they're doing. Mm-hmm. Uh, and they're still even in the in the up market. Other than the Grand Seiko, there's not a whole lot where they're even offering anything different. You know with you know, I think they're getting into Sapphire Crystal now, but, you know, very few of their watches have it. I don't know. I just mm. think, uh, you know, they they should take care of, you know, their base, really, that built them. But they don't care what I say. They don't care what anybody says. They just yeah. do whatever they, they want mm. to do. So, Well, I don't know if you guys have the, the same uh, feeling as I do. And I, I did kind of, I set this in my, when I reviewed my SPB, at the end, I said, look, I was in the same boat where I was like, oh, what the heck are they doing? And they're moving up market and this is wrong. And, you know, it, 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 I was just completely against it. And it, it's funny because before I got this watch, uh, I wasn't going to pay a thousand dollars for a Seiko, right? I was like, that's crazy. That's ridiculous. I could get an Oris. I could get something else, you know, but the more I looked at it, I was just so in love with it. And I was like, no, I, I really want a 62 MAS and I am not going to go another brand because i want a seiko that looks like that and i can't afford the sla and it's just it's just hard so the more i looked at it the more i thought about it and actually did speak to omar the guy that sold the the watch to p and he's like look man you're looking at this the wrong way you know he's like yeah they're charging more money but look you're getting heritage you're getting something good it's going to retain its value if anything it's probably going to go up in value and Seiko really has been, in my opinion, undervaluing what they offer for such a long time. I mean, case in point, you could still pick up, go to Joma shop, you could still pick up an old Seiko 5. Granted, it doesn't have the specs of an homage watch, but you could pick them up for 80 bucks. You know, mm-hmm. and that's kind of unheard of. They're kind of on their own. Like what other watch, automatic watch with heritage and everything can you pick up for 80 bucks? So in my opinion, even the old Seiko 5s, maybe but it went worth 180 bucks or something. I don't know, you know. Um I do have an issue though with a lot of the things that they're doing, like offering watches for 500 bucks, 400 bucks, and not even including a Sapphire uh, crystal. Mm-hmm. And that's just lazy. And that's just like, I don't know, come on, how much more can you pay for that? You know, but the funny thing is, so you're talking about homage watches and they're, they're doing it better than Seiko, but what movement are they using? They're using the Seiko movement, you know? So right. And that, that's right. another thing. <laughs> No, yeah, mm-hmm. that's another thing. But you, you're not going to see Rolex say, hey, everybody, have a 3135 movement. Put it in any watch you want. You know, that's <laughs> right. not going to happen. That's yeah. not going to happen. They're, they're, they're sure. doing this to themselves, you know, for I, the I most agree. part. I agree. I agree 100%. But, uh, yeah, and, I mean, all the micro brands coming out, not all of them, but a lot of them are using the NH35, NH36 movement, right? Because why? Because it's a reliable movement. It's an amazing mm-hmm. movement. And it's like the Honda the honda motors of the watch world if you will you know what i mean and well what are, what are your thoughts on grand seiko because a lot of people have issues with grand seiko i don't know i can't i'm i don't think i can pay that amount of money for that i mean it, the, no the the quality of those is fantastic and i've never right. seen one in person just from what i've what i've read but i you know if you're going to spend that much money you could get a rolex or an omega or something and i just feel like that's more of the route to go uh if i had that kind of money to spend um i I probably would go a different route yeah Yeah. i mean i agree i mean i i agree and i disagree at the same time because i think the perception that 
us as collectors have for Seiko. Again, it's like misalignment and this and that, but Grand Seiko is in a completely different league, you know, and then they do compete yeah. against the, the big boys. And one of the cool things about Grand Seiko that I personally like is not only just the heritage and the how they beat the Swiss at their own game, but also the finishing, the, the dials, man. I mean, the dials, nobody else can, can compete Beautiful. with Grand Seiko. But mm, beautiful. I, I think, and I might be wrong, but I think this is all, it comes down to perception us thinking how can i pay so much for a seiko because i have seiko on the dial but it's i could tell you from personal experience that this watch the spb it's finished because i have the skx right so i'm looking at both of, i had i have a seiko 5 too so i'm looking at all of them and i'm like i can't believe this is coming out of the same factory because they all feel different the bezel feels different the finishing is different the movement is different um it, it's it's hard i just think seiko is kind of all over the place and they just need to get it together and i guarantee that in 10 years time when they're all up market and they're not the entry level watch people are going to look back or listen to these podcasts and be like what that was a weird time for seiko now they're they're they set themselves here you know but i don't know i might be wrong i don't know <laughs> mm. no i mean I don't, I don't think you're wrong i would love to i've never seen one in person or anything I, that certainly might change my mind for sure but just uh on the surface uh, i don't know if if, yeah. if i would do that at, at this moment if, if you had to make me choose i would probably not choose that yeah it's, mm. it's it's hard because look if i took the name seiko off the let's use the spb right for for an example if i took the the name seiko off the dial and just told you hey look at this watch man check it out you know 70 hour power reserve hacking hand winding sapphire crystal you know this that and look at the proportions the proportions are crazy and it comes with a story i'm not going to tell you what what brand it is but this is the story the heritage it was the first diver introduced by the company what do you think? Let me know. I guarantee you'd be like, dang, this is, this is actually a really nice watch. Is this Swiss? And then if I told you Seiko, then you're like, Oh wait, wait, they're charging how much for this? It doesn't make any sense. But when you put <laughs> yeah. it side by side with an Oris, as a matter of fact, I have an, an, an Oris uh, pointer date, a new one, not, not my vintage one. It was, they were pretty much there. And it's like, people don't have a problem paying $1,200, $1,500 for an Oris because they'd see entry level swiss watch mm -hmm. entry level twelve hundred dollars like hmm all right but when you compare it to the seiko you're like oh no but the seiko should not be a thousand dollars that's ridiculous but it's like well it's hard <laughs> it's well no hard i'm i look i'm fine with paying that for for a seiko i'm not fine with paying eight to ten grand for one you know when you when okay. there's other things that, that that's what i'm talking about that that yeah. kind of grand seiko price tag is is what yeah. i'm talking about and and I know there's a lot of Grand Seiko. Now, Grand Seiko's get the iconic ones. Like, I was looking at a snowflake because I was like, if I ever have money, a snowflake would be really, really cool. But they're expensive now because people know what they are. They became kind of iconic. And now they're selling for, I think last time I checked, almost close to six grand. When in retail, mm -hmm. I think we're less than five or something, which for what they gave you with the spring drive and everything else, I, I, I could see that, you know what I mean? But uh, yeah, I, I think people that buy Grand Seiko is because they're either Seiko fanboys or maybe when they see one in the metal, they're like, wait a minute, the finishing on this is so much better than this other thing, you know? And, and, and I, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna buy it. But yeah, if I had five grand to spend, I probably wouldn't go Grand Seiko. I would go Omega all day. Cause Rolex, you can't even, you can't do anything with $5,000. You can't get a Rolex. So yeah. Go vintage, yeah. Mm -hmm. you know? um, but yeah, man. So let me move into something kind of uh, I, I'm, I'm just really interested pet peeves, right? So what is, what are your biggest pet peeves as far as the watch community? And then also, you know, uh, just watch collecting and, 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 and maybe watches like say something about a watch that you like, I cannot stand that. And it gets on my nerves. <laughs> well, I think probably my biggest pet peeve, and this is such a stupid one, really uh, it's, it's guys that, refuse to even acknowledge that you can put a leather strap on a diver like oh. that just drives me up yes. the wall like to see yes. when somebody posts a picture on some forum of like their skx on a leather strap and people flip out i'm like yeah. man come on guys like seriously oh, i just don't like leather on a diver because you know you, you that's so <laughs> stupid because the leather will be ruined if you take it in the water are you gonna go do you 
do you find yourself in situations where you're going to be underwater and you did not know that that was going to happen? If that happens to you, you've got much bigger problems than the strap that's on your watch. Right. That's for sure. So yeah, that is, that is my biggest one. Let people do what they want to do with their watches. It's their right. watch. They can do whatever they want. Uh, I, had that's, a, that's, uh, I had a similar situation with a uh, G shock where I put a NATO on a, um, my 5600, my DW5600, and the guy sent me a message like, that is so ugly. Why did you do that? And I'm <laughs> like, it's my watch. You know what I mean? I do what I want <laughs> yeah. to with it. You know what I mean? Like, it was crazy. Crazy. Yeah, I think the, I think the G-Shocks look cool on NATO's personally. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I, I, I just don't get it. I, I Why people got to bully other folks? You know, I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, man, it's 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 crazy. You know, I you get snobs and you get people saying all kinds of things. And it's it's like, look, it's it's your opinion. I get it. Everybody has an opinion. But if it's not a positive opinion, then keep it to yourself. You know, mm-hmm. what, how is this benefiting anybody else? I mean, does it make you feel better because you're belittling other people? I mean, I guess that's what it is. You know, in their household, they must be a nobody or maybe they're married and their wife controls them so bad that they need to have an authority online or something <laughs> mm-hmm. serious, you know and it, it pisses me yeah. off because it's like look you, you know this man i mean you're a youtuber it takes a long time to put together a video from concept to recording to editing to uploading to coming up with a thumbnail it's a ton of work we pour ourselves we pour our souls our everything into these into these videos and then you upload it and you're you're hoping to entertain people right and, and hoping to get kudos and you know good positive vibes and comments and then there's an idiot comes along i get a message because you messed up on something you said the wrong thing or they don't like what you're doing and it's like if you just don't like it you don't have to watch my video you don't have to mm-hmm. see that that doesn't bother me to be honest with you i i i find that hilarious like really if, when oh, people wow. yeah like if somebody trolls <laughs> the videos or something i i love it i think it is hilarious it doesn't matter like how mean they are i just i don't care and i just think it's very funny and uh, well, it's in like something happens recently uh, where every video I upload, someone uh, votes it thumbs down immediately. Like but, as soon it. as it comes out, it's like thumbs down, like every single time, you know, which is, is pretty funny. But I don't I don't know. Well, you know, I don't know why. I don't know what I did to them, but I, I don't know. But I mean, thumbs up or thumbs down and still help the channel. So it don't make no difference. Yeah. Right, right. I just find it funny. I just find it funny that somebody just does that instantly. <laughs> I guess the, the funny thing is that uh, if they thumb thumbs down your video immediately, that means they're subscribed to your channel and they get that notification that you're that immediately. Your video right, up. yeah. So they're yeah. supporters mm-hmm. of the channel. Thank yeah, you so, so much. Some, yeah. <laughs> some good stuff comes out of it, I guess. Have you ever had a comment, though, that, I mean, come on, you said you, you enjoy it, but ha- has there ever been a comment that kind of did rub you the wrong way and you're like, all right, that, that was a little too far. I, I don't know about that. No, you know, did, were, I can't remember. Were were you the one that told me uh, about Watch Lab doing the video uh, review of me? I can't remember. Uh, but Yeah, you know what? I think... I think I think it might have been, but well, anyway, you, you know, Watch Lab, right? So he did a a, a video review of my channel, which was uh, not nice at all. But I found it that it was it was so funny. Like his whole video was so funny, and the stuff that he was picking me apart about, I just I loved it. I, no, nothing's really rubbed me the wrong way, and I thanked him for doing it because I thought it was funny. So mm. I don't know. Did he ever reply? I don't know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and then he 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 gave compliments after that but you know it was i I just it was i was totally like flattered that he took the time to rip me apart like that i mean i really really was i really enjoyed it but no no comments really no it's i'm too old to let anything bother me it no i it's mostly i just laugh you know because you know no nobody knows who you are nobody knows who you really are and everything like that it's just they're they're just picking apart the video and you know there's there's not a whole lot that they could really say that would would bug me that's funny cool. well since we are in the whole youtube thing let me ask something before p ross moves on um is there a channel out there that really inspires you like a youtube watch channel that you're like i draw inspiration from them a lot of times 
No, I mean, I think there's guys that I find entertaining, like all the big guys, you know, I, I watch, uh, you know, all of them, uh, you know, of course, just one more watch and, uh, you know, TGV, you know, I watch them and, uh, and I, and to be honest with you, I watch watch lab too, you know, as I, I just think <laughs> that guy, I think he's so, I think he's so interesting as a person. So I, I, I like to watch him, but he hasn't done anything recently. I don't know. He, he kind of switched over to doing movie reviews and, stuff mm. like that so instead of watches but uh yeah and done a video in a while but but yeah i mean not it's it's kind of hard for me to borrow anything from anybody yeah you know with with the way that i do it you know it's 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 a good bit different so uh but yeah just you know the big guys i watch that's cool okay. have you ever aside from watch lab have you ever communicated with any of the big guys exchange messages or no i never have no no it's 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 not for it i just i don't know i guess i feel like i don't want to bother him <laughs> i guess i mean you know, it's, look we, we could speak from personal experience some of them some of the big guys do feel like celebrities unfortunately and they're mm -hmm. kind of on their own but there is some other people like bigger guys like jody right perfect example i mean as you can see go on youtube he's been making his rounds with a bunch of people that we know and including ourselves and <laughs> Mm -hmm. I was personally nervous to reach out to him because I felt the same way. Like all these guys have made it so big on YouTube and have millions and millions of views. Why would they talk to somebody like me? You know, but some people like, like him don't view themselves as we view them. You know, right. They're super humble. And, and that's one of the, one of the good uh, traits, I guess you can have in this, in this YouTube space or whatever, if you make it big and you can remain humble people are always and not to take you. yourself too seriously absolutely yeah, yeah no yeah. no for sure so we hopefully you keep being you even when you hit 10,000 20,000 subscribers and i'm sure you will i mean you, you oh yeah like i'm not really cool yeah guy, it's, so. it's gonna be the same it's it's the same i'm just doing this to entertain myself you know i if i if i find something funny that's and I, then i do it you know and it just goes out there and if other people like it then great you know you can come along on this journey with me but uh but yeah, no, it's it's just a, a fun thing to do that uh, I'm enjoying. No, I'm not sure if you're married or not, but if you are, how does your significant other feel about you spending so much time with watches and talking about watches all the time? I I am married, and she doesn't care. And you know that I've on the channel. If you've if you've watched the videos from the beginning, I I haven't been overly kind to wives and significant others in general. <laughs> I know. Uh, so uh, yeah, no, she's she's cool with it. She doesn't bother me. She doesn't care. Doesn't really want to watch any of the videos or anything like that. So it just it is what it is. It's kind of nice. Keep it separate, you know. Yeah, I, I know. With my wife, I kind of aggravate her. When I put my video on and she, she, she be like, oh, God, you're scaring me. Will you turn that off, please? <laughs> and I just do it to mess with her. You know what I'm saying? You know, just one of, one of the things for me, it's like I, I spend a, a lot of time editing and videoing and all that. And I do it for myself, you know, just, just like you said, it's just like it's for myself and for my own entertainment. And mm -hmm. I just want to better myself and improve. So that way at the end, hopefully, you know, in, in, in a few years, I could show my son and say hey look if you really try to do something even if you don't know how to do it you just try to get better and better and that's what life is all about at least for me that's what it's all about you know trying to get better at whatever it is that you're doing but it's funny right so i'm, I'm editing and i'm like oh man i had like an exhausting like few hours of editing i'm like oh, okay finally it's done you know it's cool and then i'll tell my wife hey i, I put this little funny thing in there that i think was funny you want to watch it and she's like oh is it long <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, Yo, no, yeah. it's oh, really yeah. short, I promise you. And then she watches it and she goes, she's watching it and she doesn't laugh. And she's like, oh, okay. I'm like, you didn't think that was funny? She's like, yeah, not really. <laughs> <I'm> like, <laughs> All right. My, my wife is the same way. It's a, she'll, she'll watch, mm -hmm. you know, we'll, we'll be sitting next to each other and I'll put it on the TV or whatever. And, and just to <laughs> be like, hey, do you think this is funny? And she literally just watches it like this. She's just like... <laughs> <laughs> With no reaction. And then at the end, she's like, yeah, it was all right. So, mm -hmm. <laughs> so I don't know. You know, so, I don't know. It's kind of hard to bounce, you know, feedback yeah. and jokes when somebody just doesn't get it, especially watch jokes. You write a watch joke, you got to tell it to somebody that understands watches or nobody gets it at all. <laughs> so I, I get right. it. I get it. Yeah, it's, it's hard. 
I always mm-hmm. wondered, I'm like, these A-list celebrities, right? Brad Pitt and Leonardo and all these guys, like, to us, they're like idols, right? Like, oh, my God. Oh. But to their significant others, they're just a regular Joe, right? And it's right. like, it's funny. They probably watch their movies, too, going like, oh, God. I don't oh, know this is no going. good. Yeah, this, this is no good. <laughs> or, uh, really? You, we all know you're not like that at home. You know? Right. It's, it's funny. The people closest to you are almost like not your biggest fans. <laughs> right. No, not at all. No. Yeah, that's true. Very true. So, uh, what's your ultimate goal when it comes to collecting, and also for your channel? Ooh, product placement. Dr. Well, Dr. yes, Ray. I had to get this in there. You know, it's <laughs> mm-hmm. pay, paying big money to be on there, but uh, uh, yes, yes, uh, I, I don't have a goal. I really don't, you know. And I know that's kind of disappointing, I guess. But I just, <laughs> I just want to continue doing what I'm doing, you know, and and entertaining, you know, myself and the folks that want to watch. And, uh, as far as collecting goes, you know, it's such a, it's such a unique industry that we're a part of because there's always a new watch. There's always Mm -hmm. a new watch company. There's always a new micro brand and you literally can go broke doing this. So you have to be, very careful with with what you what you want to do. So as long as I keep finding watches and I can keep getting watches in, I'll, I'll continue to do it. And and that's really the only goal. I mean, I don't have a subscriber goal, and I'm not trying to make money or anything off doing this. And you know, it it, it is what it is. I right, say right. that, but my watches, but but my videos have ads in it now. But right, <laughs> I, I didn't I didn't have to do that. But uh, well, you you right. ultimately picked up a, a Seamaster, right? So. I did. Yeah. How did that feel? I mean, I, uh, I was really excited till I got it. Uh, <laughs> it's just, <laughs> no, the, the, the watch is great. And, uh, the guy that was selling it, uh, I looked through all the pictures, everything he had box and papers, you know, all, all the shebang. I missed, uh, the fact that the bezel was messed up and doesn't align. And I did a video about it a few weeks right. ago. Uh, and so that was disappointing when I got it. Cause I thought from the photos, I thought it was just off one click. It's like, oh, okay. He didn't align it. But then looking closer at the, the loom pip doesn't line up with the scallop. Like that's what you want in a Seamaster is that the, the top of the, the sharp point of the scallop, you want right. that aligned with the loom pip triangle. And, and this was way off. And then I took it to Omega and, you know, uh, I said, Hey, is there anything you can do about it? And he's like, well, I don't know. Cause they, they generally don't work on the watches at the, the store, even though they have a technician. So I don't know what that's about, but, uh, they adjust so bracelets. I, that's all they do. <laughs> yeah, I guess. But he said he, he put a new click ring in it and that didn't fix it. And of course they won't swap the bezel for you. If, even if you bring in a bezel, they won't do mm. it at, at, at the to, place. So you have to send right. it to Switzerland, spend. Yeah, yeah right. Right. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. And so mm. he came out and he said, I, I don't really know how to d- to say this any other way, but your bezel is wonky. And I was like, okay, wonky. All right. That's refreshing. In an Omega boutique. And he's like, this thing is wonky, but I don't know. Um, he it said it sh- had taken it. <laughs> yeah. Right. Right. Like it had taken an impact or something. I don't know. It's, I don't put it on the guy that sold it to me. I just, uh, yeah, it was my mistake. I mean, it was all there and it was my mistake. So hopefully down the road, I'll be able to get it fixed, but it is a great watch. I, I really like it. And, you know, it was nice to get that. That was the grail at the time. So uh, it's nice to, uh, to, to get, to still have that. And I still enjoy wearing it, even though it's jacked up. Yeah, right. But, but honestly, it's, 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 that's the imperfection that you see, but to anybody else, they probably won't even realize that that's there. It bothers you though. So. Oh, it, it bothered me a lot. Yeah, it sure hmm. does. Well, so you say <laughs> So you said that was the grill at the time. What is the grill now? Ooh. Um, uh, no, I'm just kidding. no, I'm probably a Speedmaster, to be honest with you. Awesome I think, uh, mm. yeah, I really want to. But gosh, man, they're re-releasing it. They're, and where the dial's different now, I think. Uh, a little bit. So, yeah, changing yeah. Things, yeah. I mean, I'm hoping to get the Hesselite Moonwatch you know it's gonna get expensive man because well i know i know so they're they're definitely gonna go up in value how do you feel about i want to get your thoughts on the snoopy how do you feel about the snoopy i, I think it's stupid i mean i know a lot of people what? 
I, I think a lot of people are into putting the Peanuts characters on their watches. <laughs> I, I am just not into that. I know Timex does it too. I think it's, mm -hmm. I just think it's the dumbest thing. Invicta with Mickey Mouse on the damn dial. What, what the hell? I mean, yeah. you know, <laughs> if you want to give it to a kid, give it to a kid. Sure, sure. But uh, yeah, for, for me, I'm just, I'm not into it at all. It's just know? amazing how many uh, uh, fans of stuff you have out there for that. You know what I mean? Oh, I know. There's a ton of people. Yeah. I'm going to get a lot of hate for this. I bet. <laughs> well, for me, <laughs> you know? because I, I love Snoopy. So something about Snoopy, I, I obviously because of the Snoopy Award and everything, that's why they put it on. Um, but Snoopy, ever since I was a little kid, he's been pretty cool. But I, I get it. I mean, I could see how paying thousands of dollars for a cartoon character on your watch just kind of doesn't go because a watch is like a manly thing, right? And then you're putting a little cartoon yeah. character in it. So what's next? The Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, or you know, I, I, I oh, I, that's why I draw. Didn't the line. Seiko? I think Seiko did that, didn't they? If I'm not did mistaken, they, I, don't, I don't know. Or they they released like a ver. It didn't have a. The well, they have Street the Fighter dial. now, right? That's Street right, Fighter. Street Fighter. Yeah, Street Fighter. Yeah, that, that was See, weird to too. me. I've yeah, been, I've been a fan of Street Fighter since I was little, but I don't know if I could wear a Street. What? Fighter. Yeah. What? Well, you know, you know what I have a problem with that they're on the on the new Seiko, uh, fake XXKX, and I just I I have a problem with those watches. <laughs> Mm -mm. But I wouldn't, I wouldn't mind having like a modded watch or something, something fun, you know, that you're like, yeah, this is just fun. I don't, I don't want to take myself serious, you know. So I still wear the the five kx. I still wear it on occasion. I, I've got a, a few of them, and uh, I, I rotate them around every now and then. It's, it's, you know, it is what it is. It doesn't look bad. I think no, it's just it looks, more of the psychological thing. Of it, it is. It is. Well, it's, it's like this whole thing about Seiko moving up market, right? I mean, it's it's uh, it's wow. a psychological thing. Look, they're not bad looking watches. Obviously, it looks like an SKX. So it looks fantastic. I love it. It's just more the disappointment, you know, from Seiko. Like, you had the opportunity. But now that they moved up market, I see why they did that. Because they want to make away with all the Seiko 5, the affordable ones. They want them to sell off. And the new entry level point to Seiko is going to be 250 bucks mm -hmm. more, you know, so they moved it up market by, you know, 150 bucks, which doesn't, in the big scheme of things, it's not that bad. You know what I mean? But yeah. So something off topic off watches, you know, impressions. I, I mean, come on. I, I, I know oh, I, I was going <laughs> to ask you this, but I'm like, you got it. You're an entertaining guy. Like, do you do any impressions? And if so, who? And I just, I just want to. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm doing a pretty good impression of Ron Swanson right now from Parks and Rec with this damn mustache I have. This is for, <laughs> this is for a uh, intro that I was gonna do, but uh, That's yeah, it's commitment, like, my friend, that is commitment. Yeah, yeah, and I've never done a Ron Swanson impression. Be like, give me all the eggs and bacon you have. <laughs> I've never done that. I've never done that before. So, uh, but uh, no, that I don't really do a lot of. I, I guess I do more voices on the show than I do the uh, uh, like a, a specific impression. Like I have one that I've used a couple of times when I do a narration, and it's just sort of like a hacky Ian McKellen, Patrick Stewart kind of rip off. <laughs> horrible that's impression weird. that i that's do well, I th i'll give you one line that's my favorite line and it's it goes and so it began and that's the only thing i do that's it. yeah, it's terrible it's terrible it's that terrible. great man oh so that's yeah that's that's yeah that's about it it's funny yeah your your voice has always intrigued me ever since I, I, it's not just that it's just entertaining you get with your, with your what, what card do you have again uh i know you had like a convertible right uh the uh bmw z3 that's right you yeah still have that? from yeah from 1997 yeah. is that from the, the golden yeah. oh mm -hmm. my god so yep. you are a big mm. man. yeah you, man he, yeah wow. Wow. it's not the same color but yes it's the, the same car yeah. <laughs> and it is a piece of shit i will tell you that mm. <laughs> it is not a great car <laughs> wow i know my mom was uh a few years back, she was so in love with that car. And I told her, I said, look, I've heard some really bad things about BMW and Mercedes-Benz. I, They're great cars, I guess. But when they break down and fixing them, it's just, it's just really expensive. Yeah. And then the, mm -hmm. the C3, she was just in love with that car. And then the Z4 came out and she's like, oh, I even like that one even better. <laughs> but Yeah, well, 
with the Z3, you know, I was like, man, that's James Bond's car. It's awesome. And then literally every middle-aged housewife in America bought one. And it like basically emasculated the car. It was never like super masculine to begin with, but that did not help it. And so mm-hmm. now, even when I'm driving around now, I'm like, eh, is this a lady's car? Like, I don't know it's James <laughs> Bond, but nobody else knows it's James Bond. They just, they, just, oh, they see their, their grandmother driving it or something. So, AP, I can, yeah, I can I picture know. my man over here with his, with his car and his Seamaster thinking he's James yeah. Bond. Uh-huh, right, right. Uh-huh. <laughs> wow. That's hilarious, man. Yeah, at least you're not driving when my dad was driving. For a while there, he was driving a, a BMW Beetle. Not the old school, oh, wow. not the cool ones, the new ones that look kind of mm. feminine. Oh, yeah. And I was like, what are you doing? Mm-hmm. <laughs> but he thought it was a great <laughs> car. It's diesel and it says on gas. I'm like, great. And you look like an idiot <laughs> when driving it. No offense. <laughs> right. Wow. <laughs> yeah, mine's held together with like rubber bands and stuff now. It's just sort of, yeah, it's, yeah, I got to work on it myself. You know, it's just because it's so expensive to get things fixed yeah. and it's more than the car's worth to, to do it. So, that's cool. That's cool. Are you planning mm-hmm. on selling it or just keeping it because of the? No, I probably not. I mean, you right now you could only sell it for like a couple of grand or something. It's not worth well it. I'd it. rather rather have the car. Yeah, mm. that's cool. So what's next? Uh, uh, Aston Martin to to go there? Yeah, <laughs> mm. yeah. I wish maybe the channel will take <laughs> off and you, I can get one of those. But now that'd be cool. Yeah. <laughs> yep. That that's the Grail car. I think for sure. Yeah. Yeah, that's a nice car. So, uh, what's the best advice you can give both a seasoned collector and someone that's getting started in the hobby? Uh, somebody that's getting started, I would say, don't do it. Um, <laughs> Great <laughs> advice. Uh, Great advice. Yeah, I, don't do it. If you're thinking about doing it, don't. Don't do it. It's It will ruin your life, really. Um, you know, it just, you'll be obsessed with it. You're going to be obsessed. It'll be the only thing you ever want, the only thing you ever want to talk about, the only thing you ever want to do. Uh, and uh, so that would be my advice to somebody new, but also, you know, do your research. You know, yeah. if you really want to, to, to buy a watch, watch as many watch reviews as you can from as many different people as you can read as much as you can, and then make your informed decision from that point. Uh, that's, that would be my advice. And uh, seasoned collectors, I mean, you know, just don't, don't, use your kid's college fund to buy that Seamaster uh, <laughs> there. That's probably the the best advice, I think. Right on. That's funny. That's yeah, no, no, you, you hit the nail on the head about the uh, the spending and getting addicted to watches and spending so much money. I I could attest to that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, the, the craziest thing is, and I don't know if it's happened to you guys. I know P. Ross, we talked about this. So you order a watch and it hasn't even arrived and you're already looking for another one um oh yeah you oh yeah watch right that you just bought and you're like oh honeymoon face or whatever but a, but a week later a few days later you're really looking for something else and it's like what is wrong with me like yeah you, <laughs> like i i just i'm never satisfied and i think that's- the old uh the old changing your watch three times a day you know that kind of stuff you ever do that th- yeah. three different watches oh yeah yeah oh yeah <laughs> yep well, I mean, mm-hmm. at, at least one of the, one of the things that that we know is changing the strap. Um, mm-hmm. You know, change it changes the watch, and definitely it helps. Bunch of, it, it it helps, but it doesn't. I I think you get to a point where you're past that, right? And you're like, yeah, great. I've seen it on different straps. That's just not doing it for me. I need a new watch. <laughs> right. Yeah. <laughs> that's. Crazy. I just got to stay out of. I got to stay out of Macy's. That's a. Uh, <laughs> that's a bad place to be. <laughs> yeah. No, so. Do you prefer buying online or in person or? Um, it depends on what it is. If, if it's something that I feel like I've watched enough information on, I'm okay with getting it online, but I really like to see the watch in person. Uh, first of all, cause I, I don't flip watches. I haven't done that. Um, really? Oh, wow. No, I haven't. No. Um, and I'm not saying I'm not, I wouldn't do that, but to this point I haven't done that. So Everything you see on the channel is is still, you know, with the collection. Wow. Uh, and, uh, yeah, so I would rather see the watch in person just to know for, for sure that I'm going to like it. Like the oceanographer, uh, the Belova or- oceanographer, Orshin? It's not Orshin. Oceanographer. Yeah, Orshin, the Orshin. <laughs> Orshin, the oceanographer. Um, 
yeah, I, I had to see that in person and I was okay. really blown away by it. So picked it up. Mm. So what about the Omega? You picked that up online? Or? No, that was online. Yeah, that okay. was online. Yeah. And that's, see, that's another reason that's why, why I probably need to, what, yeah, I should have picked that up in person for sure. Should have done that. Makes sense. Makes yeah. sense. Yeah. Cool. Cool. Well, we talked about a lot of things. This is the part of the show where we talk about other things. So a movie, food, whatever you want to talk about take it away recommend rant about something and go for it man p ross i gotta ask you about Ooh. that poster behind you is that a prince is that a prince oh, poster don't get him started yes yes it is prince man yes. i i saw prince in concert in like 2002 i think 2002 2003 one night alone uni- one night alone i'm not sure I, okay. I, I I can't remember, but it was uh it was in the University of Tennessee in uh mm. not and I think it was Knoxville, Tennessee. Okay. Well I really I really don't know where I am ever, but uh yeah, so uh and it, it was he was absolutely awesome. Awesome, awesome. Uh it was crazy because it was so loud in there and people were cheering so loudly that he had to stop and he had to he he told everybody he said, Okay. I know that you're excited, but I cannot hear myself at no all way. because it's, yeah, he did. Oh. He said, I can't hear myself. You're going to have to quiet down because I can't, I can't, I can't hear myself. So wow. that was neat. Awesome guitarist. Probably oh, the yeah. best guitarist I've seen. Oh yeah. Absolutely. You know, he's, he's, he's amazing. So I just was curious if that was right. the Prince, yes. you know, that yes, poster. Yes, so. it is. Well, yeah. Do you Huge want to tell you want to tell him p ross or should i because you hey take it away go ahead bro so i don't know if you know this but uh, or people listening and we've kind of said it a little bit on the show but p ross actually has a dedicated channel on youtube to prince it's called oh does he really yeah it's called the purple underground he has uh, almost seven thousand subscribers right yeah Uh oh wow and that's i mean they're fanatics so that's why when you said prince i'm like oh yeah the this guy is like a diehard like (laughs) prince oh yeah i mean he oh, knows yeah, everything sure. about Prince. I didn't know. That's yeah. awesome. That's awesome. I have yes, to sir. check that out. Yeah, so uh, anybody listening, y'all can go subscribe to the Purple Underground. <laughs> so where, where did the name come from? Purple, obviously, because... Well, the, the Purple Underground uh, was mentioned in a song that he had made back in, I want to say, 85, 86, called Chris Dubal. And it was like just a, a verse he had in there that said, well, welcome to the Purple Underground. So that's where we got it from. So... Got it. Got it. You know, I, I questioned P. Ross, and this may be controversial and not that it matters, but I, I questioned P. Ross about Prince's sexuality just because I was interested. I was like, oh, so when did he come out? You know, and he's like, what do you mean come out? I'm like, he was yeah. gay, right. I mean, pretty obvious. <laughs> no. He's like, no, he wasn't gay. He, like, right. defends him. And he's like, look, right. there's nothing wrong with it, especially in today's day and age. Like, if you're gay or bisexual or whatever you identify yourself as, that's cool. I don't care. I was just curious if he came out because obviously back in the days it was different than what it is now, you know. But yeah, P. Ross tells me that he was not gay apparently, but I'm so no. Sure. No, well, I'll tell you at, at the beginning of the concert, he came out and he there was a bed, like a four poster bed on there, Ooh, and he okay. he came out and he laid down and he was like this, and he'd be like, you know, over the crowd like laying down, he was wiggling his butt and stuff, and I was thinking. Well, okay, what am I about to watch? And then, uh, but after that, I mean, I I tell you, he, no, I, I no, I don't think he's he was that way at all. Uh, and you know, right, like you said, not that there's anything wrong with that, but that was a, no, a that was a manly performance. I will tell you that man all the way. You know who who greatest. liked the ladies for sure. You know he had some great backup singers and stuff, and yeah, it was yeah. I think the he's greatest. he's great. Yep, really was okay. Hey, again, greatest. I'm not insulting them. I'm, I'm, I'm just curious. I was just curious. <laughs> P. Ross, other mm-hmm. things would t- t- hit me with something. Star Wars, oh, The God. Mandalorian. Oh, oh my God. <laughs> oh, 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 my freaking God. It was the, the, the last episode of this season was everything. And I cried. I cried when I saw it because they are doing Star Wars right you know what I'm saying? I'm not going to say no more. I'm not going to spoil it for nobody, but tears. <laughs> it was it was great. It was <laughs> oh God. freaking hey. great. I'm trying to tell you, boy, if you're a Star Wars fan and you see this, you know what I'm talking about if you saw it. So mm. it was, oh, my God. 
So to uh, our guests, are you are you a Star Wars fan? Lord no. Thank I God. Thank I God. like I'm a I'm a Star Trek guy. Oh, I'm, I'm, a Star I'm, a Star, Trek I'm a Star Trek guy too. You know what I'm saying? I, I you know I I've, I've tried to get into the Star Wars movies like literally force myself to sit down and <laughs> and watch them and I cannot make it through them. I can't I've even bought them on purpose saying you're going to watch this everybody likes it you and for like some it. reason <laughs> yeah right and I and for some reason I just never could get into it and I don't want to be one of those guys that's like no nah, it's too cool for me. You know, yeah. I, it's it's yeah. everybody likes it. That's why I hate it. That's not the case. I've really tried. I don't know what it is. I don't know what it is. Mm. Well, I'll, I'll tell you something, P. Ross, since I, I probably never told you this. So when the Star Wars movie got released a few years ago, the, the new one with the BB-8. Force whatever, Awakens. Or whatever. Force Awakens. So it looked pretty good, right? So I told my wife, I'm like, have you ever seen a Star Wars movie? She's like, no, obviously I know what it is because we're from the 80s and you know, born in the eighties and like, yeah, we, we, we kind of know what it is, but yeah, I never watched one and I never watched one either. So I was like, all right, cool. Why don't we, I think before we watched that one or be after whatever, it doesn't matter. We went to go watch and we actually liked it. Right. BB eight was cute and those special effects. And I was like, what the heck? Like, this is actually pretty good. Why don't we watch everything? So we went back and watched the trilogy, the original, right. Made it through. It was okay. We're like, all right, well, hmm. And then we went to go see the second one after the BB-8 and it was okay. And it just kind of went downhill from there for us. And we're like, we really try to be fanboys. We uh, obviously in Southern California, we have Disneyland. So we went to, they have a ton of Star Wars crap there. So we went and we tried to like be a part of that, of that world and everything. And it just, it just, we just couldn't get into it. Well, well, the last (laughs) Jedi was a, a total flop. But, I didn't have. I didn't even watch that. I did not yeah. want to watch that because it just it seemed like a dumb movie. So that's why with the Mandalorian, yeah. I watched the first episode and I just could not get into it. I like Baby Yoda. He looks cute. I've said it again, you know, in, in the past. But uh, I, I might give it a shot. I might give it a shot just because I, I I hate feeling like a hater every time you bring it up. I always and, roll my and, eyes. And Baby Yoda does have a name. That's okay. right. He does. What was his he name? Does have Grogu. Grogu. All right. Grogu he does that's, have a that's name. What? That's worse. <laughs> <laughs> Star Wars haters. Oh, wow. Thank you for coming on the show. <laughs> yeah. Finally, I have a, you know, last show, actually, the, the one that's airing today, uh, today being the 20, what is it today? I don't even know, the 20th, December 20th. Yeah. And obviously we're recording this. You're not listening to this on the 20th, but our friend Fred from Shalu, so he came on and for whatever reason, him and P. Ross always talk about Star Wars and they went on this rant towards the end. <laughs> <laughs> it just for like five what was it five minutes six minutes about i it just may have been zoned out i just i didn't had no idea what the hell that they were like so deep in their conversation about how they felt about this i felt like how my wife feels when i talk about watches and it just felt horrible <laughs> yeah well, fr- well fred if you listen to this this is what they're doing to me right now okay <laughs> <laughs> so other things for me so finally we got a chance to check out mulan on the disney app whatever plus and my wife had great movie there asking about it you know what special effects was terrible for being a disney movie i was disappointed in some of the things that they were doing that i was like man their budget must have been really big why did they do that but the storyline and and everything i mean it was cool you know and my son kind of was watching it too he's five and then towards the end he wanted to be a ninja and be fighting with me so i was like (laughs) oh okay that's cool i mean i I see the, the effect these movies have on kids and it was good i mean you know entertaining i mean it wasn't great but it was good I don't think it got good reviews, if I'm not mistaken. I thought it was great. Yeah, I I, I didn't think it was great, but I think it was entertaining. You know, it it wasn't bad. It was was cool. It had had its moments, you know? So I didn't really like what Disney did with it in the beginning, making you pay extra in order to see it. I don't think it was worth all that, but, you know, when they finally put it on, it was pretty good. Yeah. What, What do you guys think about Wonder Woman coming out on Christmas Day, in theaters and on uh, HBO Max, like would you would you watch it on HBO Max instead I, of going to the theater? Or? Yeah, 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 definitely. 100%. It's because yeah. of the because of what's going on with the virus. Like we, uh, me personally, mm-hmm. my family and, and and me personally, we're paranoid. I guess is the, is the right word. I mean, we've had so many people that we know get it, and the the craziest thing is that people people's body 
react differently. So some are like, oh, it's fine, whatever. But some people are like, this is the worst thing I've ever gotten in my life. And I don't mm-hmm. I don't wish this on anybody. And it scares you, right? And and and, and especially, I've said it again in, uh, in the past that we, we are very close with my in-laws. And unfortunately, they do have underlining conditions and they're a little older. So I, I if I got it or my wife got it and God forbid we gave it to them, I, that'd be terrible. Right. You know what I mean, so to no, yeah. your question, I, I would just get it on. On t- it's not the same I, I know that i mean but just just to be sure. safe on tv what about you how do you feel yeah. about it uh yeah i'm i'm fine with going to the theater um uh, yeah <laughs> i mean cool. I, you shut down everything i said the guy well no I'm, i am no i i agree yes i agree like i'm i'm not going to spend uh christmas with my parents because i'm you know worried to, you know i don't want to go over there they're older you know and so i, I won't be doing that um but yeah, I mean, I don't feel now. Of course, I'm in Texas, okay, and apparently, as I'm sure you guys know around the country, we pretty much think we're immune to this, and we do whatever we want. That's pretty much what the deal is in Texas. Um, so we're not restricted really in any regard. Uh, we can still go everywhere we want to go. Are you serious? Uh, oh, wow. yeah, yeah. There's mask requirements in, in certain places, but you know, people ignore those. So it is a little. You know, it is a little scary to a certain extent, but like I'll go to the mall and, you know, it's everything's open. And so it's it's I guess it's I guess it depends on how you look at it. I mean, we we like to to be able to go and do things. And, you know, I know California is extremely restricted, so I don't know how I could even do do it over there. Uh, But I certainly understand it. I certainly understand it. Uh, But Texas is just like almost a whole nother country. You know, they just kind of do whatever they want to do. So let me ask yes. you something that I, I know, obviously you film in theaters, like inside of a movie theater, because you have friends in the industry that are owners, I'm assuming of the movie theater. Is that, is that fair to say, or they're just, they're just managers? Uh, that's yeah, that's, that's fair. Yeah. Okay. So the, did they get affected by this when they closed down and everything or are they okay? Well, I, I mean, I can't really get too much into it, but it's uh, yeah. I mean, yeah. I mean, a lot of movie theaters closed uh, throughout, the country in general. So I know a lot of their workers were furloughed. And um, so that, that was, that was difficult. Um, But I know that they're doing a lot of, uh, you know, uh, cleaning things and procedures to, to make it safe to come back. And I I feel comfortable with, with what they're doing. Uh, So, so yeah, I mean, it's been tough for the movie theater industry. I mean, well, you can just look at like Tom Cruise's rant that he went on the other day. Oh yeah. You guys saw that. I mean, you know, you know, he was over the line probably, but totally right about it, in my opinion. I mean, you know, there it's it's an entire industry. People think, well, it's just people working on the movies, but it's not. It's the people that are showing right. you the movies, too, mm-hmm. that are affected by this. So you got, you know, a couple of guys that aren't wanting to, to follow the protocols, and then you get an entire $200 million movie shut down, and then the release schedules get moved. I mean, mm-hmm. it, could, it could certainly, you know, it takes a lot of, uh, you know, toll on the industry, so... Yeah. yeah, I don't know if I uh, told you this, Miguel, but I just I had a friend that died from COVID, a very close friend. Yeah, you told me about it. Yeah, and um, come to find out, you know what I'm saying? Like I'm all for masks when you go out in public, and he just wouldn't wear a mask. You know what I mean? And not that it would have helped, but maybe it would have. You know what I mean? Um, so just wear your mask, be safe. You know, it's it's crazy. Yeah. So. No, I know it's it's like I I almost feel like uh, like one of those paranoid people, right? Mm-hmm. Like going out or wearing a mask and this and that. But then you hear stories like this, and it's like, well, am I wrong for trying to be paranoid? I mean, and then I we we hear you know things about other countries or Texas. I mean, Texas is here in the U.S. and yeah, they operate very differently and they believe in different things. And you know, unfortunately, it got to the point where a lot of these things were even political and it's like what the hell like this is a a worldwide problem it's not a u.s only problem you know so why are people going political with this too like it's just it's weird you know so hopefully now with the vaccine people hopefully it works and hopefully people do get vaccinated and see if that makes a difference I, i i don't know i really hope it does you know yeah definitely definitely i think we'll we'll probably know something around you know march april kind of deal hopefully maybe getting back to some sort of normalcy at that I, point i would hope so i mean look as a as a parent of a five-year-old it's, it's pretty upsetting man it's like seeing him he just started kindergarten and he um 
he's doing it online, right? Cause schools are closed. So it's like, that's pretty sad. I mean, I, I remember kindergarten, it's like fun, right? You with friends and playing in the playground and he doesn't have that. He can't have that. You know, it's not normal. This is the new normal for him. And it's crazy. We were just reminiscing on, on our childhood and, and even two years ago, like how different it was, right? Looking at pictures like, oh yeah, we went here and we went there and you weren't thinking about a virus possibly killing you. And it's, it's so crazy, you know, but you just kind of change your lifestyle, I guess, to kind of adhere to, to the situation, but it sucks, you know, but then it, it's crazy where right? you look at movies like Star Wars or, or things like that and, and see their world, right? With the normals, like everybody's shooting each other and they live so different and you're like, wow, how did it get to be like that? Well, this is maybe the origin of what's going to happen in the future. Who knows, you know, so Mm -hmm. crazy stuff man but yeah any, anyway it's been a pleasure having you on the show where geez what a downer ending my goodness okay Such okay a... let's spin it around let's spin <laughs> it around come on come on <laughs> we all love watches uh the whole thing about watch collecting i guess you don't you don't you just don't take yourself serious right and just enjoy what you buy no. enjoy what you have on your wrist and and more importantly like honestly aside from watches the community community is awesome you know just build relationships great watch community great watch community so hopefully that's a little more positive <laughs> yeah i think so yeah <laughs> all right cool so where can people find you check out the mandalorian or, or don't or not you know or not, or that's fine, that or, that's fine. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so where can Spray people it. find you man uh, you can find me on the Watch Me Go Broke YouTube channel, uh, Watch Me Go Broke, or on Instagram at Watch Me Go Broke. And then I have a Twitter that I oh. never use, but okay. it's like it's at Watch Broke because I broke. I think I typed it in wrong. I don't know what happened, but uh, mm. so I never. I don't really use that one. But those are the two places that you can find me. Okay, cool. P. Ross, Ross wristwatch love everywhere: YouTube, Facebook, Instagram. Okay, and SoCal Watch Reviews on YouTube and Instagram and Relojando, obviously the Spanish version of my of my show, um, of my YouTube, whatever, reviews. And this podcast, so if you're listening, please go ahead and uh, rate it. Uh, so because we only have like five ratings or four ratings, which is kind of sad, somebody put four stars. And because they did that, it messed the whole thing up. And now we have like a 4.5 rating and I'm like... Mm. But the review was really good, but they put four stars and I'm like, hmm, mm. all right, maybe we should <laughs> wow. pay some people to put some fake reviews up there for our show just to help us out. Because, you know, we've been we've been doing this for a year and a half. And it's funny, like we've seen a little growth, but not really like the fans have been fans from the beginning, have been fans from the beginning. And we get a few people here and there, new ones, but we see other podcasts and they're just blowing up and it's crazy. It's like we want to we want to be there, too. You know, this is a lot of work. And do you get a Do you get a good amount of listens on them it's Pretty okay good. it's okay you know and, and and it's funny because a lot of I've, well, I've heard i don't know how honest they are but a lot of these other podcasters that that we know and whatever they get thousands of listens per episode we're in the hundreds uh low hundreds oh, okay so i mean it's not like 50 people are listening and we're, that's not what we're saying but it's nowhere near what these big podcasters are doing and you know i i feel like we do the same amount of work if not more because we got oh, yeah. YouTube channels and whatnot but you know at the end of the day the good thing that's come out of this podcast is the relationships man like look we we just talked for a little bit over an hour it's been fun mm -hmm. and how long would it take for us to build this relationship if i was just commenting on your youtube videos yeah, yeah. ever you know so now that we mm -hmm. actually talk we know who you are of course it's different now you know who we are you know and and we vice versa and same thing happened with a lot of other influencers and, and brand owners you know i became friends with like a, a good guy that i could that i could i actually have his number and we text each other as wes for notice he actually became a friend and it's cool you know i'm excited about that because you, you become friends with people in the industry and because of the podcast you know so mm -hmm. and p ross of course i mean we he was on the podcast as a guest and we became friends and then he became my co-host and now we're good friends and we text each other and call each other all the time mm -hmm. not even about watches just family life you know just regular stuff man that's that's what yeah. it's about you know honestly that's what it's about so yes sir but I'm disappointed he's a Star Wars fan. So, uh, you know, <laughs> he's not perfect. We can all, they can't all be winners. So it's, 
<laughs> hey. Sorry, P. Ross. I'm kidding. Hey. I'm, kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Hey. hey, hey, man. It's cool. <laughs> what does your shirt say? It's official. What? It's official. Your it's nerd. official. Oh, look at it. <laughs> oh. It's official. Man. And the bottom my, says, I don't care. My, oh, my wow. Snoopy comment probably went over a little worse <laughs> now, I guess. <laughs> For those of you listening, Pete Ross is wearing a Snoopy shirt. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes, wow. sir. Yikes. All right. <laughs> well, on that note, uh, thank you so much for coming on. We do appreciate it. Hopefully, we can thank have you. you on in the future. Keep up the good work, my friend. Um, very entertaining. Can't wait for you to hit more milestones. You're over 2,000 on, on YouTube. Over 2,000 subscribers and, and, and many more coming your way. So, so go well, I appreciate it. Yes, yeah, sir. Watch me go broke. So, that's been episode 56. Uh, Miguel here and P. Ross saying thank you. Take care and stay humble.